Uh, I'd like to welcome Dr. Ahmed Tutla to the call today, a medical doctor born in South Africa of Indian parentage. And um, gosh, let's let's just cut to the chase here. He pioneered robotic colon cancer surgeon. Uh, he's one of the uh, top surgeons in America, according to Cambridge University. I'd like to welcome to the call Dr. Ahmed Tutla. Go ahead, Ahmed. We're ready. Hi, uh, hi everybody. Wherever you are, either good morning or good evening. I want to wish everybody a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. 2007 has been a very success, successful year, not only for the Zango Company, for personally as well, my personal life, in my uh, medical life, and my family life. So I'm going to go through some slides and then um, uh, show you what I have been doing and why I'm so interested in uh, the mangosteen juice. The first slide that you can see called robotic internet surgery. This was 16 years ago I talked about it, and I used the crudest form of robotic surgery. I used to wear a mic and talk to my robotics, and my robotic uh, arm would move instruments and uh, cameras inside the belly. And now it's only six months ago that the uh, big uh, headline was robotic surgery is now uh, via new technology. So 16 years ago, just like mangosteen juice, the people now think that, you know, uh, what I'm talking about cannot be true. So that's why it takes time. Somebody has to be the first to do it. So we're going to go through some slides, and then we'll get some questions. And Art has talked about my background. I don't want to dwell too much on it. And um, we can see on the screen my background and what I've been doing. And... Uh, uh, my walls in my office don't have enough space with all the diplomas, and um, I buy most of it on a blue light special. So, in any case, this is uh, what I have said, that if you want, if you do not have what you always wanted to have, then you must do what you have never done before. The pessimist always looks for difficulty in every opportunity. The optimist, on the other hand, looks for opportunity in every difficulty. This is to remember, we had a very successful convention in 2007 in October in Utah, and we had over 10,000 people. So, you know, every year the number of people attending the convention grows by leaps and bounds. And so I don't know where it's going to end 10 years from now. Maybe we'll have to hire a big stadium somewhere, but it was very exciting, you know, and those of you who have not attended the convention, I urge you very strongly to do so in this uh, coming year, in 2008. You will never regret it. Um, we're going to talk about how you can stay very healthy with minimal or no medication, because medication is not the answer to okay. the illnesses that we suffer from. So if you can avoid medication, you're so much better off. You know, they are saying that hospitals are safe and clean. You know, this is not true. We have 1.2 million mishaps a day in hospitals and doctor's offices and so on and so on. And the cure for cancer is around the corner. I've heard that when I graduated in the 60s, and it's still around the corner because we don't spend enough time or money to find a cure. But it's so much easier to prevent cancer. It is possible. And drug companies will never destroy your health. They want you to be sick, so you can always use drugs. This is where the money is. We, so we spend more money than any, any other country in the world, yet we are number 74 out of 171 countries as far as the health of the Americans go, you know, and we spend over, over $2 trillion. We should be number one. The recent data that puts Americans at 42 for longevity, look at the, the Jordanians in the Middle East long, live longer than the Americans. So there's something wrong with our Medicare, with our health system, so... Consumer uh, International uh, World Congress met in Sydney and they awarded the uh, top prize for to certain companies make products that's not healthy for us. The number one was Rarium, which is a sleeping medication uh, they're advocating for children. So, you know, um, what you read is not always true. What you hear is not always true. So you must always find out for yourself what is best for your health. Um <clears throat> Health should be a consumer-driven industry, you know, because we cannot survive in this world for the amount of money we're spending on health care. And other countries do not spend as much because they concentrate on prevention more than curing diseases. Because we spend so much money on health care, our industries are suffering. You know, if you own a big company, it's so much easier to outsource your, your business to other countries where the cost is so low. 
and you don't blame those companies. The number one cause for uh, our industry is going overseas is healthcare costs. You know, General Motors spend sixteen hundred dollars per worker per retiree every year. Yet the industry, uh, uh, steel per car is only fourteen hundred. So another uh, another cause is the obesity in our schools. You know, our kids don't eat healthy food. You know, over forty percent of our children in school are obese, and obesity uh, leads to all kind of medical problems, from heart disease to uh, renal failure to kidney failure to to hypertension to cancer. So we need to change our school system, you know, especially how we feed our kids. We need to remove vending machines in schools. And there are certain countries, like in England, they have removed all vending machines. So that's very important. This is an ad I took out of a, um, as a magazine where they show a child with diabetes. And the company that came out with this ad is urging people to buy shares in this company because look at what happen, what's happening. At the moment, we have 250 million uh, sufferers with diabetes. It's going to go to 350 million. So there's a lot of money to be made in, in selling this instrument to measure your, your blood level. In your, so this is a sad advertisement. So many a time people know they are obese, know they are, uh, have possible diabetes, they ignore it. And the consequences are gangrene of your feet or your hand. And this guy had his leg amputated below the knee. And it's a sad situation. So what is the answer to all the problem in the world? You've got to eat right, you've got to exercise, and you must take supplements. Okay? It's very important to take supplements. Diet and exercise are important, but if you just do that and not take supplements, then you, don't, you are not going to be healthy. The reason for that, the, the reason for that is because changes in the, in the climate, in the food we eat, and supplements will protect us from all the contaminants in, in uh, our environment. So diet. Always we eat to live and not the other way around. Always eat food that's high in fat and fat. The most important meal of the day is breakfast. The reason for breakfast is the, that you, you're going to have the entire day to burn off the calories. Besides that, you know, we have what we call a gastrocolic reflex. That means you get up in the morning, you put food into your stomach, and then the stomach sends a message to your brain and all the valves, including the rectal valves, open. So you're supposed to have a bowel movement every day. Just uh, three weeks ago, I removed the, the entire colon of a patient who used to have a bowel, mo- bowel movement once every three weeks. And the colon was useless. We tried to correct it, you know, non-surgically, but nothing would help. Eventually, I had to take the entire colon out and leave the rectum and connect a small bowel to the rectum. This is from not following what nature has has instructed us to do. You've got to have breakfast so you can move your bowel every day. And if you move your bowel every day, there's less chance of you having all kinds of diseases in the colon, from colitis to cancers. That's why in this part of the world, we see so much colon cancer, yet in the Far East, there isn't that many people with cancer because having bowel movements is a ritual, like we brush our teeth every morning. So important to remember that. And whenever you buy any article of food, see what it contains. And avoid all drinks and food that has artificial sweetness. We don't have all the results yet, but the recent reports coming out, the artificial sweetness, some of them, can cause you know, a problem, including cancer. So you avoid it. If you're going to have any kind of uh, sweetener for your coffee, use, use plain sugar. And always restrict the amount of red meat. Eat more fish and chicken. Red meat and colon cancer are related. So... What I talked about in the 60s about red meat and the association with cancer, the American Cancer Society just came out with a report in 2005 they, where they followed 150,000 men and women between the ages of 70 and uh, uh, 55 and 70. And for 20 years, they followed these patients. And they found that uh, those individuals who ate beef and or pork or processed meat a couple of times a, a week had 30 to 40 percent more colon cancer than those who ate red meat once in a while. So this is a very important finding. So eat less red meat, more what you call um, high fiber food. You can eat chicken and fish. That's much safer. So you rather eat um, food like this, just salmon with vegetables instead of this. It's not good for you. Um, being opinion background, I use these condiments in my daily cooking. 
on the top hand on the left side is cumin, which is a yellow cell. And uh, there has been a lot of scientific research done on cumin, which is anti-cancer. You can use pepper, and below that is the cardamom, and below that is the ginger. And on the left of that is the pumpkin seed and cherries. These are all healthy food, which you, which you should incorporate in your daily cooking. Exercise is very important. You know, I live in Michigan where we have long, long winters. You know, we can't do much walking out in the winter, heavy snowfall. So you can join a gym or go to the mall and walk. And instead of going to in your car and driving next door, walk to your neighbor. And remember, you've got to always park your car as far away from the front door of wherever the store you're going to. And get some exercise. And do not shop when you're hungry because you buy a lot of junk. And whenever you are, whenever it is possible, walk upstairs instead of taking the elevators. And tell your kids to avoid being couch potatoes. Also restrict the amount of TV you watch with your children. And my children uh, watch TV one hour on a school day. On weekends they have, uh, you know, a little more uh, time on TV. So exercise why is exercise important we are seeing more and more neurological diseases like alzheimer's and multiple sclerosis and so on and so on the reason is because we don't exercise we don't keep ourselves healthy on the left side you see before exercise on the right side you see after exercise this is a part of the brain which is very important so when you exercise you increase the blood flow to the brain so it's very important to have a regular exercises Supplement. Why is it so necessary? Because we live in a highly polluted world. The water we drink is contaminated. You know, it's supposed to be clean water, but it's very difficult to find clean water. The food we eat is contaminated, either with hormones or antibiotics or other heavy metals. The air we breathe is not clean. It's full of carbon dioxide. And look at the lower level and lower side there. You see, got 27% higher level of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. So this is increasing on a daily basis. Places like India and China are using more and more automobiles as the middle class grows. So they are polluting the atmosphere and they refuse to sign the Kyoto Protocol. Hopefully, in a very near future, all these countries will realize that to save the planet, they must stop polluting the world. So... Greenhouse gases, of course, there's global warming. You know, when I came to the Michigan in the 60s, we had tremendous amount of snow. We don't see that anymore. And the globe is getting warmer and warmer. We're getting more hurricanes, you know, and mudslides and so on, and for wildfires in California. This is all related to the warming of the globe because of the um, uh, thinning of the um, ozone layer. We are seeing more and more skin cancer than we ever saw before because of the UVA and UVB rays. So we need to protect ourselves. What happens with contaminants? They come from the air, from the food, or from the water. Uh, uh, results in a substance called free medical. And while we talk, while I talk with uh, at this very moment, I'm being bombarded with free radicals. They say the body is made of 600 trillion cells, and the body gets about 2 billion hits with free radicals a day. And we have shown on research that every disease starts at the cell level. And then cancer occurs in a similar fashion. The free radical causes damage to the cell, especially the DNA, and when these cells multiply or replicate, they produce cancer. And there's increased incidence of all types of cancer around the world. You talk, take colon cancer, which I specialize in. You know, years ago when I was in medical school, my professors used to tell me that I will never see colon cancer under the age of 50. At the moment, I'm operating on patients under the age of 20. We had a 14-year-old. We had a 19-year-old with colon cancer. So what has changed? You know, the globe is changing, the contamination, and I think this is directly related to the increased incidence of cancer. So... To understand what is free radical, we got to go to high school chemistry. All matter is made of um, uh, of atoms. An atom has a nucleus in the center containing the positive and negative charges, and circulating in the periphery of the atoms are the electrons. In a normal healthy cell, these electrons are of even numbers: two, four, six, eight, ten. 
whereas the free radicals, which are also made of atoms, have uneven number of electrons, three, five, seven. So when you have any substance in your body that has uneven number of electrons, become harmful to your cells. So this is what happens from the contamination. This is the structure of an atom, and you can see the uh, nucleus in the center with a positive and negative charge and circulating around that are the electrons. And this is a normal cell. If you take a free radical, which is made of atoms as well, their electrons are of uneven numbers. As I said, when you have anything uneven numbers of electrons, they become unstable, they become harmful to your body, and they want to become stable. And the way they become stable is they rob an electron wherever they can find it. And the place they find it is in our cells, normal cells. When they rob an electron, our normal cells, our normal cells become abnormal. And when this replicates or divides into daughter cells, they produce diseases. So how can we protect ourselves? You know, it causes tremendous amount of illness and sickness and, you know, a lot of expenses and sometimes premature death. And we can avoid it. So this is a guy that we have to swear by when we become doctors. And he was a guy who mentioned that let food be your medicine. So there are a lot of natural things in uh, produce and which you can utilize. The xanthones and the flavonoids and the catechins, the proanthanidine, the polysaccharides, the sterols. Now, all of these are naturally occurring substances, and they're very useful to keep our cells healthy. And we are very fortunate to find all of this in one single fruit. The xanthons are polyphenols found in plants. They are conjugated carbon ring, makes them very stable. When you have a very stable substance in your body, they can move around wherever they are needed, and they are very positive for you to keep healthy. They can act by themselves, or they can combine with each other, or they can combine with enzymes and hormones and uh, correct any damage and produce healthy cells. Here's the chemistry of it, okay? And the three important xanthones are the alpha mangosteen, the gamma mangosteen, the garcinone E. And here is what happens in our body. When you have a normal cell on the left side here, when it reproduces a cell, produces a daughter cell, it must look like the mother cell. If something happens to that cell, it produces a cell that's abnormal. And this is how diseases occur. Why this happens? Because the free radical, which is unstable substance, robs an electron from the mother cell, and this is the result. So what these antons do is to is to donate the electron that the free radicals need, so it stabilizes it, so it becomes an even number, and so it won't attack our normal cell. So there are <clears throat> antioxidants and xanthones in a lot of good uh, uh, vegetables like spinach and broccoli, but you have to eat a tremendous amount of spinach, a truck full a day to keep healthy. And I don't think anybody has tried it or was willing to try to eat that much spinach a day. So we have to find some alternative ways. There are other fruits like wolfberry, blueberries, and they all have good substances. So you should incorporate that in your diet. Now, <clears throat> the fruit that we have found that has all this uh, natural uh, good stuff for your body is called the mangosteen fruit. It's been around for centuries, and people in the Far East have been using the fruit for years and years and years. And it took science and, and the Western world to realize the beneficial effect only in recent years. It was a uh, French priest who first explored the, uh, the um, mangosteen fruit and found its uh, medicinal value. And after that, we have come across, this is what the fruit looks like now. You know, in Thailand, we, we were there about uh, uh, six, eight months ago. And, and you eat so much of this when you are there. You know, they cost very little, and they are delicious. I ate about 30 of these every day, and you cannot stop eating. But the beneficial effects lies not in the fruit itself, but in the covering of the fruit, called the perica. This is nature's way of protecting this delicious white fruit. Otherwise, this fruit will be damaged, and maybe the tree will be damaged, or whatever, and we won't have this beautiful fruit. So nature has provided the... Um, the uh, xanthones 
to protect the fruit from the free radicals. Anything that has life, which includes animals and fruits and vegetables, are bombarded by free radicals as we are. So somebody has to protect this delicious fruit. Fruit grows in Southeast Asia. The medicinal property was first discovered in Thailand, has been used for hundreds of years. As I said, the beneficial effects lies in the pericarp. There are 200 known xanthones in nature, and this fruit has over 40. Now, I believe it, there are 46 xanthones have been discovered. So it's a wonderful stuff. Now, alpha mangosteen acts as an antioxidant. There is a gamma mangosteen known to act as anti-inflammatory. Everybody in the world takes anti-inflammatory, anti-inflammatory on a daily basis, from aspirin to Vioxx to Celebrex to steroids. And um, they all have side effects. And gastronin E has been shown in the lab to act as anti-cancer. So all these studies have been done uh, in the lab. We have hardly any studies in human beings. So this is what we need to do to change the uh, perception that medical profession has that if, if anything is there without a prescription cannot be good. So we want to prove them wrong. And we want to prove it wrong to the public as well. Because when you are born, you are told doctors will give you a prescription. Every time you go to a doctor's office, you want a prescription. And this is not necessarily good for you and does not always work. Now, <clears throat> heart attack is also due to inflammation because any abnormal situation in your body, the body wants to get rid of it. If you've got um, cholesterol deposit in your blood vessels of your heart, uh, the body wants to get rid of that. And then if your mouth is not clean and you brush your teeth and if you bleed, tiny blood vessels called capillaries are opened up and bacteria gets into your bloodstream and it finds an abnormal situation like a blockage in your blood vessels of the heart, it causes inflammation. Inflammation results in swelling. As it is, the, the deposition of cholesterol narrows your opening. So when you get an inflammation, it completely closes off the opening. You get a, suddenly you get a heart attack. And this is true for all central nervous diseases like Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, multiple sclerosis, all caused by inflammation. Therefore, doctors use substances to prevent inflammation. Yeah, but, and every doctor knows that the basis of almost all diseases is inflammation. So why wouldn't they accept some natural stuff that prevents inflammation, gets rid of inflammation? But we have never been taught in medical school or in our residency, and therefore it's so difficult to convince physicians. And prevention of disease is so much easier and less expensive than a cure. For every $100 we're going to spend on prevention, it costs over $5,000 to try to get rid of the disease. And trying to get rid of disease has a lot of complications. Here's an article from Newsweek, and it has been acknowledged that chronic inflammation causes a lot of problems, you know, from migraine headache to arthritis to heart disease, and therefore we have to find a common element. However, the substance that we use in our uh, medical practices causes a lot of problems. Now, who can drink this guy, this juice? Anybody that's living, anything that grows, from human beings to animals to trees and vegetables, if you put a um, couple drops in your, in your watering can for your tomatoes and see what happens to your tomatoes and your animals, animals get the same diseases that human beings get, arthritis to tumors. And you can keep your, your animals healthy by giving them, you know, this uh, xanthones. I am healthy. I don't need a supplement. It's a misnomer. You know, recently I, began, I presented uh, this slide to a uh, Zango party we had in Michigan. And I asked this question, how many of you think you are healthy? And numerous hands went up. And for myself, I thought I was very healthy. You never know what's going in your body. Diseases like arthritis and heart disease and other conditions start very early stage in a uh, stage of life. And it takes many, many years before they manifest themselves. And um, for instance, autism. When I arrived in the United States from Europe in the 60s, we used to have one child out of a thousand births with autism or ADHD. Now it is 94 out of every thousand births with ADHD or autism. Why is this? Because the, the world has changed. There's a lot of contamination, heavy metals or whatever. So we need to take 
precautions. You know, pregnant mothers can take precaution to to avoid this kind of problems in the uh, unborn child. That's why I advocate you should take something natural, and maybe it will help the newborn. Now, for instance, my brother who lived with me for 17 years went home to retire, and four months ago he dropped, died from a heart attack. You know, he was very healthy, very thin, played tennis, and he had a heart attack. He never knew what was going in the body. So I made a point after he died to go to the cardiologist, my friend, and see if something is happening in my body. And I took a CAT scan of my of my heart. And here is what I found. You can see this is my heart. And on the left-hand side, you can see the blood vessels. In the right coronary artery, right coronary artery, there is a blockage there, which I never knew. And I, I tell everybody I'm very healthy. And you can see the pictures on your right lower hand and this one here. There are blockages there. Fortunately, this is not the main blood vessel. It is one of the vessels of the heart. But I need to know now what I should do to prevent this becoming worse. So I've got to eat right. And anything that can prevent further blockage of the blood vessel. For instance, we know that if I can prevent inflammation in that blood vessel by taking certain substances, whether it's aspirin or whether it's Celebrex or, or, or steroids, I can prevent inflammation. But these substances have a lot of side effects. So I need to find something that has no side effects. And the only thing I know of as of today is a mangosteen juice, which has very strong anti-inflammatory property. So this is important for us to know. So so-called healthy is a misnomer. This is the calcium level in my, in my bloodstream. And this is my heart and my chest. And you can see my heart, my pancreas, my stomach. And this is the kidney. And the kidneys on the right and left, they appear to be in very good shape, good blood supply. So now medicine is not a perfect science. It's far from it. It's part science, part art. So many a time patients come to us, we do all the tests we need to do, and yet we cannot find why the patient is complaining of pain or not feeling well. So sometimes we advise patients to see a chiropractor or do yoga or whatever. So medicine is not a perfect sign. You cannot expect perfect result every time you do surgery or treat a patient. It is it is part science and part uh, art. Sometimes we have to open patients up hoping that we're doing the right thing. So what happens now? <clears throat> you know, penicillin was a wonderful antibiotic. We overused and abused antibiotics, penicillin for so many years, so penicillin has now become useless. So we use antibiotics for the most trivial things. You know, if you take your child with a uh, uh, cough or a cold, we need to find out whether it is from bacteria or from a virus. But, you know, very rarely the doctors do that, but they give antibiotics. You know, there are no antibiotics against viruses. So what happens is the body develops immunity and then develop superbugs because of the use of antibiotics. They feed on the antibiotic instead of getting killed by the antibiotics. Here is a case of MRSA, MRSA, which is a medicine resistant staph audio, which has become a major problem in this country. Today, more people die from MRSA infection than AIDS in the United States. It's a sad situation because we don't have antibiotics to take care of the so-called superbugs. And MRSA is number one of those. So <clears throat> in the lab, we have shown that uh, if you combine xanthones with the antibiotics, they can get rid of these so-called superbugs. And we have shown this. Now we've got clinical evidence on patients that it does, does work. So uh, it will take some time, but doctors are now becoming interested to find out what is going on with this so-called xanthones and antibiotics. So, so why would the medical community not embrace something that's natural with no side effects? Yeah, and yet we have 500 deaths per day in America because of some different antibiotics, different medication, and we need to avoid that. Well, this is Pfizer. When they took the Celebrex and the Vioxx out, they lost a tremendous amount of money. So they are coming out with an ad of two and two and a half minutes long, trying to tell the public to go back buying Celebrex for arthritis. Celebrex has a lot of side effects. This is a um, 
um, cough mixture, and they have shown that cough, this particular cough mixture has what's called PPA, can cause damage to your brain, can cause hemorrhage. You need to avoid that. Um, Dr. Ron Paul is one of the guys running to become a, a candidate for the presidency. He's got a different uh, take on health in this country and is uh, advocating that the FDA put some halt in the way they um, approve drugs and also uh, natural stuff, not to come down too heavy on people who are taking natural stuff. Because if it works, why not? So i put a disclaimer here. Whatever I'm telling you, I have never claimed that I can cure anybody of anything. But you need to try it. If it works, wonderful. You can get more information about this. You can do your own scientific research. And you always should find out for yourself what works and what is safe for your body. Anti-aging, we have a lot of substances now that can keep you healthy, prevent the de degeneration of your cells. And all now, xanthones can prevent degeneration of cells. And this is my picture in 1990, and uh, I hope to look like this another 10 years. Here's a case of a 53-year-old patient who the doc oncologists have given up on her because she had colon cancer which spread to the liver. She had a growth the size of a grapefruit. And I happened to meet her by chance. And um, I put on a, I put her on a bottle a day and brought her to my office a week later. I was able to remove the cancer from her liver with a special needle that we have now called um, radio frequency ablation. And you can see on the top, Right hand corner is a black uh, mark here. That's the size of the tumor. We put a needle into the liver and we can get rid of it. In four hours, I was able to burn out the entire tumor. She's still on xanthones. Instead of dying in a month or two, she's still alive, almost going to two years now. Some of the research that has been done, uh, you can look it up yourself in PubMed.com. There is a lot of medical articles. And the very bottom is HIV virus. They have shown in the lab that the HIV virus, if we can keep it uh, in the immature stage, we don't get the symptoms of AIDS. And they have shown in the lab that the xanthones will prevent this uh, enzyme called Proteus from converting an immature virus into a mature virus. Very important. We have tried to do some research on this. We have um, people now are interested in getting to the act. We got in South Africa, we had numerous doctors who are helping us do some work. More recently, we had a doctor from uh, Henry Ford Hospital who was at my meeting, became very interested in what I had to show him, and um, I gave him a couple of cases uh, and told him to try it on burn patients and see if it's going to work. So he is taking it himself, and he's very pleased with the results. So hopefully this will work. Um, if you want to keep in touch with me, I have a website called drtutla.com, you know, or you can call me. And I have a, in Google, I have Dr. Tutla Space. I'll be writing articles. Uh, again, a disclaimer. And more recently, because of the MRSA outbreak, we had uh, incidents in a gym uh, where several people came down with um, severe MRSA infection. And uh, I think one died, and several of them were in hospital for days and days. And we had one individual who started taking the uh, the juice and putting it on his uh, infected skin, and within three days, the MRSA was completely gone. And the uh, Oakland Press and Pontiac interviewed me about this natural stuff and what it does for the body. So those of you who are interested, you can go to your Internet and just click on um, Oakland Press, Pontiac, and you can read the article. These are the different articles been, uh, written in different magazines about this food. This is a case of autism, and um, this kid has such advanced autism. In 35 days, the child was completely changed. The mother wrote a um, testimony, sent it to me, to show me that this child is doing wonderful um, Let's see if I can bring this up again. I'm 
I'm having difficulty getting this up, but... Yeah, just try double-clicking on it. I think it came up last time, Abbott, on that. Right. Okay. Here it comes, I think. No? <laughs> yeah, there we go. Okay, this is an article about the son, Luke, who was diagnosed with a very advanced autism. And you can see they had difficulty controlling this child's behavior. This is a child in the middle there. And um, you can see the same child in another picture. Oh. And then if you go back, this is the child after 35 days. Maximize your screen there, Ahmed. Yes, sorry. Ac maximize your screen there. There okay. you go. Yep. There it is. So here's a child. It's unbelievable the changes in 35 days. So it, it does seem to work. I did a radio show for the uh, Autism Society out of New York, and they were very pleased what I had to say. So hopefully they get online and find out about it. And um, hoping that that fruity will get interested, his child has autism, and hope these things will change, will help children. We have too many children coming down with autism. 2.4 million children in America on some kind of drugs for behavioral problem. They, all of these children have a lot of problems, and you know, the, using a drug is not always the answer. So that's my presentation, and um, hopefully it's... Uh, we learned something today, and, um, and there is no stop. This is like a uh, train has taken off, and it's going to go faster and faster every year. And I have no doubt in my mind that the medical profession and the public will recognize that what we are saying has some validity and is worth trying. And thank you for listening to me. Hey, Ahmed, a great presentation. We've got a few minutes left. Uh, let's see if we can take a few questions. There's a question uh, bar there. Uh, you can at, you can uh, click on and a ask a question while we're uh, still here. That's uh, that's an incredible picture. Uh, so anybody's got some questions for Ahmed, uh, go ahead and hit the question thing and a enter your question in there. We'll take a few questions. We have about ten minutes left here. Um, you know, Ahmed, uh, the picture is worth a thousand words. I would say no that the picture it. of the before and after oh, of yeah. that mm -hmm. child with autism is just absolutely amazing. It's, it's amazing. hard to believe it's yeah. the same person looking at it, isn't it? Right, right. It's true. It's true. And this is one of many, many, many cases of autism where these antons have helped. It's very dramatic. The results you know, have been very dramatic. And what I see a lot of, Ahmed, uh, you know, for me, it's like, okay, how could this be? But just about every one of these uh, diseases or conditions has an inflammation uh, factor basis, involved yeah. in it. So now they're finding, for instance, that there may be an inflammation link to autism, and so that potentially would be why someone like this could get some results like this. Exactly. Is that right? Exactly. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. Parkinson, we know, is is inflammation. You know, multiple sclerosis, we know inflammation. So if you can prevent inflammation in your body from the time of uh, uh, conception, I think we got a good chance to to. In, you know, all the disease processes that's occurring in this world. You know. But, right. you know, it's very difficult to convince people of that. So, you know, we have drug companies, we have the uh, medical schools, and until we we teach in our medical schools uh, alternative medicine, you know, things won't uh, A lot of questions. One of the questions I'm getting really, Ahmed, here is how much to take of this. Well, and, uh, you know, it's very very difficult to say how much you should take for any particular condition. But you know, um, to keep healthy, like myself, you know, what I say, healthy. I, I believe I'm still healthy, though I have still blockage there. I take two ounces three times a day. That's an adult. Yeah. For a child, you know, if you give him half an ounce, you know, a couple times a day, or a baby, maybe two or three drops a couple times a day, you know, to keep healthy. Now, if you got some advanced condition for instance, cancer, which is a very rapidly growing cell, so you've got to hit it very hard. If you can take a bottle or even two bottles a day, you know, for, uh, for 30 or 30, 60 days, then yeah. you may get the result that you are desiring. Whether it's going to work or not, I cannot tell you. 
Yes, and it's best to take evidence. it and split it up too, right? Yeah, Ahmed? right. Yeah. yeah, you always have to split up your uh, your your juice because the xanthan levels drops after four hours in your bloodstream. You need to keep the xanthan levels high as you can in your bloodstream. So, uh, also, no you know, people are asking about your contact. I mean, you have drtutla.com is your website, so you can get more information. Do you have this... Uh, Autism story um, available on your website yet? Right, right. In my newsletters, I'm going to write more and more newsletters. You know, okay. I've been um, uh, recently. I've been so busy. I haven't done it, but I have to go back and write. I have written about ADHD and autism in my newsletters. So I, I'll try to do one or two newsletters a week, okay. so we cover as many disease processes as possible. You know, another question here is somebody's asking, well, how would it work with MS? But once again, weren't you saying that, uh, you know, MS, MS has is inflammation, inflammation factors, right? Exactly, right. Inflammation, the covering of the, of the nerve cells, like a covering of a wire, an electrical wire, when it degenerates and breaks, uh, breaks down, you know, that particular electrical wire won't work. You get a short circuit. Same thing oh. happens with the multiple sclerosis. The covering of the cell, the nerve fibers, you know, degenerates from inflammation. Then you don't get the conduction of those impulses in a proper manner. Therefore, people right. cannot walk properly or don't have control of their bladder. So if we can prevent inflammation, you know, and generate new cells, and there is a lot of clinical evidence that it has worked from the testimonials yeah. we are getting. So it's, it's worth taking it. You know, the thing is, people ask about lots of different kinds of cancers. Will this help? And, 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 and you know, and different kinds of diseases. And the fact of the matter is, nobody really knows for sure if it's going to help and, unless you actually try it, you know? Exactly. You have to try it. You have nothing to lose. And you, there are three reasons why people give up so easily when they say you should try this juice. Uh -huh. There are three reasons. One, you are not compliant. If you take it in the morning and not take it the rest of the day, it's not going to get the results. Or if you take it one day, not take it the next day. So compliance is very important. Secondly, you must take adequate amount. You know, if you've got some uh, uh, severe disease or whatever you got, taking a uh, half an ounce, you know, three times a day will not do the job. You know, thirdly, you can, don't take it long enough. You can't take it for right. a week and expect dramatic results. When you have something like arthritis that develop over 30 or 40 years and you want something to happen within a week, and it won't. You must give yourself a minimum time of 90 days or more. You know, right. If you don't get the result, keep taking it until you get the results. So, those are the three well, reasons. Uh, Ahmed, and, you know, for so, you know, really the more that you, uh, the, the more serious the condition, the, the more you should the take, really, the yeah, higher no the dosage. Doubt. There's no yeah. real upper limit, I mean, for there very is no serious... Upper limit. There is no side effects to it that right. I know of. We haven't lost a single patient, you know, a single individual or a distributor is using this, you know. Yet we have 500 deaths a day from drugs, so... Right. So you may get to diarrhea. Some people do, especially if you've got inflammation in the colon, right. like colitis or Crohn's disease. You need to start in a smaller doses then increase it over a week or two weeks, you know, and so your, right. your body can adjust to it. But other than that, there is no limit how much you can take. Um, you know, basically, Ahmed, I mean, there's a lot of similar questions coming in really about, uh, you know, different kinds of conditions. And one of the mm -hmm. things that I tell people is, you know, if they're asking about this condition or that condition, ask yourself, is, um, is this di disease or condition have any relation to inflammation. In other words, if you went to the medical doctor and they were prescribing any form of anti-inflammatory, mm -hmm. then it makes sense that a natural uh, product could do the same thing, right? I mean... There is no doubt about it. There's no doubt yeah. about it. And yeah. uh, so many of my patients, you know, when I take the history, they say, I'm on aspirin. Aspirin is anti-inflammatory. Okay? Right. But a lot of people end up with bleeding ulcers, okay? Right. Some of them we have... Some of these patients die. We do not control the bleeding. So this is anti-inflammatory. Viox is anti-inflammatory. Celebrex is anti-inflammatory. Prednisone is anti-inflammatory. Right. Yep. But they all have side effects. So why not use something that's natural with no side effects? Yeah. Hmm? So uh, the other question about, um, uh, you know, different kinds of, uh, for the autism, for instance, a boy this age, you know, children, I 
you know, don't probably need to take quite as much. But uh, if an adult was to take for a serious <laughs> condition two ounces three times a day, right, how much right. do you think this boy was taking here for autism? Right. If a, if a child is under the age of 10, an ounce three times a day will produce whatever you desire. An adult should take at least two or three ounces, you know, three times a day. You know? right. So if you diagnose a child at the age of one, autism is not diagnosed at the time of birth. Usually it's diagnosed later on, a year or two or three years later. But, uh-huh. you know, if you suspect something, you know, and I advocate that mothers who become pregnant to take this to prevent the free radical crossing the placental barrier and affecting the unborn child. So, uh, so anyway, Emmett, I don't know of any, I mean, I've got several other questions. I think we've covered most of the ones here. You know, the thing that I tell people, if you're wondering, will it will help with this or will it help with that, gosh, there's hardly anything to lose and so much to gain. You know, why not exactly. give it a try? And give uh, it a stay try. on it for 90 yeah. days. Right. There's nothing 100%, you know. But the reports we're getting from around the world, this is amazing. I, as a physician, in practice for over 40 years, I'm amazed by what people are telling me about the results they're getting. Now, am I telling you that I can cure your cancer? No. Am I telling you I'll cure you of any disease? No. But it's worth trying. You know, we know it, it, it does work clinically. So, And we need to do more studies, more research on human beings. But doing that, it takes a lot of time. You know, a lot of effort, and you know, and we have to deal with a lot of legal issues when you do human research. So, but we'll eventually do it, like we did research on vitamin C. Okay. Right. So. Yeah. The only other question, a couple of questions about allergies. You know, people think that they may be allergic to certain ingredients within the juice. Have you ever seen anything like that? Or well, people have, people have reported to me that they have taken this juice and they break out in, in um, hives or something like that. But sometimes they have certain reaction. But whenever you take any natural substance like that, and if it's working in their body, it could be either detoxification. Yes, You go right. through a yep. time of detoxification. If you are really concerned about that, then you need to reduce the amount of juice you're taking. Start a very small amount, then increase it as your body becomes tolerant to it. So, but, um, you know, the, um, there are fruits you know, added to the juice to make it palatable, but the amount is so small, you know. But if you have, say, allergy to strawberries, then you need to start a very small amount and then increase it gradually. Yeah, exactly. That, that if you're happened. concerned about any form of allergy, start with tiny amounts and gradually increase until you get right. up to what a recommended dose would be, and that could take, exactly. you know, a few days or a few weeks, right? Exactly. exactly. Okay, well, thanks a lot, Ahmed, for coming on. I uh, really appreciate your time. Pleasure. This is like, uh, I think Terry is going to come on here for a minute here. This is like our Christmas gift to all of you that are still on the line here to have uh, Dr. Tutla come on and share his heart and his wisdom and his experience with uh, each and every one of you. So I appreciate you coming on. Ahmed Terry, I think you wanted to... I just wanted to say thank you so much, Dr. Tutla, for all that you do, You're not welcome. only for our group and the rest of Zango, but for the world, because you are able to help people in a natural way, and yet you have such a kind, beautiful, big heart, and we've always appreciated our time with you. And Art and I also want to say thank you to all of you in Zango land, Zango world out there, and may you all have a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year and blessings to your family, for we do feel so blessed to be a part of this great uh, team and a part of Zango, for it is truly changing people's lives with this great juice. So thank you. Okay, thanks a lot, Amit. Listen, let's open up the lines. I'd like you to sort of give uh, Amit a little cheer here and, uh, and congratulations and maybe a Merry Christmas, if you wish, to Amit for coming on and sharing his time with us. Let's open the lines up. Merry Christmas. Thanks, Amit. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas.